Now, scientists are saying that over the past three months, water temperatures in the North Atlantic have set new records. Not only has that created problems for marine life in the region, but it's also expected to affect air temperatures worldwide. This is the North Atlantic, where temperatures have surged for more than three months. Along the coasts of the U.S., Europe and Africa. Off the coast of Texas, shoals of dead fish that died from lack of oxygen. I'm worried about the warming trend that we see in the ocean right now because uh, warming is linked with less oxygen in the ocean, which means that um, fisheries industries will, will be impacted uh, by that, and um, as well as a more acidic uh, ocean will lead to uh, things like coral bleaching, and uh, this is very worrying for the future. On June 11th, a temperature of 22.7 degrees Celsius was recorded. That's half a degree above the previous high set in 2010. One factor is dust and sand. Global warming has weakened trade winds from the Sahara Desert in Africa. So there is less dust from the Sahara being deposited on the surface of the, of the ocean, and this um, this dust used to, uh, to have a cooling effect because it, it reflects solar radiation back to space. On top of that, El Nino is now officially underway. El Nino is a natural climate pattern that happens, on average, every two to seven years. It fuels tropical cyclones and boosts rainfall, as well as flood risk. El Nino is happening while the world's oceans pretty much everywhere are warmer than average. That's not normally something that we see. Those warm waters, combined with El Nino and an already hot atmosphere, are expected to bring record temperatures to the world this year. Let's speak now to Samantha Burgess, a deputy director at the Copernicus Climate Change Service. It provides the EU with information about climate change. Uh, welcome. We do know that oceans go through natural cycles of heating and cooling. Uh, what makes this latest temperature rise so alarming? Hi there, and thank you. Yes, so there, there is an annual cycle in the um, climate of our planet, both the, the land temperatures and the ocean temperatures. And normally the maximum ocean temperatures are in August in, in the Northern Hemisphere summer, but we're seeing very high ocean temperatures at the moment in early June and much higher than what you would normally see for this time of year. In addition mm. to that, particularly in the North Atlantic region, um, ocean water temperatures are much higher, uh, which suggests a marine heat wave. There are five different categories of marine heat wave, and we're already at the highest category, category five. So I think it's fair to say that we're in uncharted territory in terms of what we're observing in the ocean temperatures right now. So with this spike in temperatures in the Atlantic Ocean, uh, who is going to be most affected by the consequences? So I think the, the consequences will play out over a number of months. Um, obviously, it impacts life in the ocean. Um, in your earlier report, you mentioned uh, fish deaths. So when the ocean warms up, it, it stratifies. So you, you don't get the mixing between the, the deep ocean, where there's more nutrients, and the surface ocean, where most life lives. So when you get the stratification, um, it, it prevents this mixing occurring and the life in the surface of the ocean quickly absorb all the ox oxygen and then they don't have the ability to move deeper into the ocean to get new oxygen, so they just die. And, mm -hmm. and this happens without their awareness because it's a passive exchange with their, their gills and you know, filtering the water. Um, so so we, we've already seen a huge number of fish deaths, um, and the expectation is we'll see more of these. And just explain for our international viewers, um, what is it about measuring the sea surface temperature uh, that makes it such a critical metric to help us understand the state of the global climate? So temperature um, in all forms is a really useful measure of, of climate change. But we know um, through science that the ocean has absorbed 90% of the excess heat from extra greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. So because the ocean is, is the proverbial enormous sponge that soaks up the, this extra heat, 
when it gets hotter than what we've seen in the past, it means we don't know what's coming next. So it has implications for life. It, have, it, it has implications for people who depend on the organisms within the ocean. It also has the ability to change storms. So with high SSTs, it's easier for hurricanes to form, for example. So we may see additional storms in the North Atlantic this year. And in the other hemisphere, in the Southern hemisphere, particularly in the Pacific Ocean, we also have the developing El Ninos. We have very high sea surface temperatures that formed off the coast of Ecuador and Peru. And now they're spiking across, across the Equatorial Pacific. And uh, we're expecting this El Nino signal to continue to develop. We mm. don't know how strong a El Nino is going to be, but this means we'll see higher temperatures in the Indo-Pacific later this year, which may also lead to other impacts like coral bleaching, where again, we'll see massive loss of life mm. on, on coral reefs in the Indo-Pacific region. There's so much at stake here. Thank you for joining us to talk about it. That is Samantha Burgess from the Copernicus Climate Change Service.